What's up, gang? JP Bouvet here, obviously, at Drum Trainer Online. And I want to talk to you guys about something I've never taught online before. It's how to get creative and eventually solo over hits. Now, what people mean when they say solo over hits or play over hits is that by hits, they mean there's a repeating pattern that usually the band is playing, right? So in this case, I'm going to show you two examples from a couple bands that I play with, and I'm going to take you through the process that I go through and that I think would be helpful for you to go through um, of getting handed, okay, hits that are either complicated or not too complicated to figure out, but a process that regardless gets you comfortable playing some cool stuff underneath it. Because to be honest, straight up drum solos nowadays, you don't usually play gigs where you need to play drum solos, but much more frequently you'll be asked to be creative over one section of the song, right? It's the outro of the song and everyone's gonna vamp. And you're supposed to have a moment of, of drum shed. So how do we work on that? That's where we're going. This first example, I guess it's not actually from a band I'm in. It's, it's from the YouTube video that I filmed for Minel Symbols called, the song's called Bambulka. Um, and it's weird, if you know that video, you're going to realize that what you're about to hear is actually displaced uh, an eighth note, but that makes it easier for our purposes, or a quarter note. So here's the hit. So the band comes in, they're like, we've got these hits, we want you to get creative with them. Ready? These just loop, right? And before we actually get into hits, I should I should mention that whether or not you play in a group that requires you to solo over hits, it doesn't really matter. This is just useful stuff for writing cool drum parts and for being creative on the kit, right? So if you're playing along to music by yourself in your practice room and that's what you do, these are going to be tools that allow you to have more fun doing that. So they're just good, good skills to have either way. So we get handed the, the, the pattern, the hits. And in this case, it's the same measure repeating over and over again. So your first step is to think, where are these hits? Okay, so we've got, try and count your way, try and identify where the two hits are as far as the counting goes. You think one and two and. So we know where our hits are. And then I like to not think about it too much, jump in and just see what happens, right? And if most, most people's instinct for something like this would lead them to play a groove where the kick drum matches the hits and they keep a beat. So most people might end up with something like... Okay, so I'm gonna take you through some, like a bunch of steps, a bunch of ideas pretty rapidly right now. Because I know we're talking to a wide audience. I don't have hours and hours of filming to do, unfortunately. So I'm gonna try to lay out a bunch of steps, a bunch of ideas, and your job is to find out where you are in that process and go further. So when I hear something like this, and my brain goes, here's what I would do, the first idea, dunes. Cut, doom. That's like your drumming 101 beat. Kick drum matches the, the band. You're keeping time here. You're keeping a backbeat here. So right off the bat, before we even leave those rules, let's think about the other options. So we've got eighth note groove. One and two and three and four and great. Can we make it a 16th note groove? Yes. Could it be swung? I think so. Now you may have also heard it 
double time of that, which would sound like... I suppose you could even half time what we've already done, so. All right, so already we're getting some creative options of how to treat this groove. So let's just pick one. I'm gonna pick the 16th note groove. And let's look at the different aspects of the drum set. Let's say the kick drum. Our instinct, and what the kick drum does a lot of the time naturally, is follows the bass player or the band or whatever the, the most important melodic rhythm is from the section. But we don't have to do that. So let's look at how we can evolve from f playing exactly the hits to doing something much more interesting. So you've just heard me play exactly the hits. Doom, cat, doom. That's great. It works. It's very safe. It's pretty boring. So your next, your first step into, into getting something more interesting going on and being creative is to keep those hits, but also add other kick drums. So you've got all this space, doom, space, boom, all this space, doom, space, boom, all this space. Pick half at a time. So let's say the second half, that long gap. And let's just mess around with different kick patterns that we put in there. Because now I'm making up the melody that the audience is going to hear. They're going to hear dunk, 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 and that becomes part of the composite melody of the thing. So check it out. And then you could say, okay, what about the first half of that measure? Doom space, doom, the first half. Let's see if we can do something cool in there. Ready, go. All right, so maybe you spend a little bit of time saying, let me think of all the all the different things I could do within these two gaps. And you can be as methodical about that as you want, right? So if you're aware that the hit's on one and the and of two, you've got all this space and you can start sort of doing a grid system thing, making sure you can put a kick drum everywhere. Can you do, okay, starting from that second kick drum, can I do every three sixteenth notes, dotted eighth notes from there? Can I do, you know, and what does it sound like if I hit the E of three randomly? Just pick an arbitrary number and say, what does that sound like? Then I go, boom. Got one, three, got one and a two and a three. That's kind of a cool beat, right? So it sound like. So, anyways, we start to expand with our kick drum, get comfortable, and then a lot of people stop right there and they say, "Well, I don't know what else to do. I've got these are all my beats." But that's where you say, "Okay, my kick drum's one part of the kit, but what about all this stuff?" So. We talked about the hi-hat a little bit, right? You can go ch 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 You could even play straight up quarter notes or less. So you've got different subdivisions you can do there. And then we'll come back to this, but the hi-hat can also start to be melodic. So the hi-hat doesn't have to just be a metronome, right? So if I just keep a snare on tune four and do some kick stuff, let's see how creative I can be with just my hi-hat. So this could be an entire area of focus for several days in the practice room.
the hi-hat can do a lot. And then you say ghost notes. Now I'm gonna very quickly mention a deep topic. Hey, beautiful drum nerds all around the world. If you liked that video, please give us some love and click there for a subscription. And if you wanna see another cool video, click there and you see another cool video. How cool is that? So I hope to see you around, stay tuned.